Okay, so we're doing muscles of the leg, and we're going to create uh, three videos. One that represents what's going on around the coxal bone and hip, one that represents the upper leg, and one that represents the lower leg. Okay, so we're going to begin with, with the coxal region and hip region. All right, and we'll start with this one. Uh, they're identical, but this has a little more detail. And that detail, let's look at right in here. Okay, so here we can see the lumbar spine going into the sacrum and coccyx. So when we looked at the torso model, we saw that inside there were some muscles associated with uh, the coxal bone and the leg and so on. So here's uh, some of those muscles we saw inside the torso. So as major, okay, it comes off the lumbar spine. It then leaves the cavity and emerges outside of the cavity and it ultimately will attach to the humerus. All right, so it's major. In our torso model, we also saw that there was something called the psoas minor. Not everyone has the psoas minor and this model doesn't have it. This is the iliacus. The iliacus covers the, uh, the ilium, covers the fossa of the ilium and the psoas major and the iliacus actually come together. When they leave, when they go under the ilioinguinal ligament and leave the cavity, they blend together and become what's known as the iliopsoas muscle, iliopsoas. So both of these come together and attach to the, hu uh, did I say humerus? I meant femur if I said humerus earlier, femur. And they're both hip flexors, so they allow you to flex your hip. You have a little bit of the, I guess this would be the erector spinae group here, okay? Um, you also have right in that location the quadratus lumborum. So, but this being that has some fascia over it, some of the thoracolumbar fascia, is probably part of the erector spinae group. So that's what we see inside, all right? And we've seen those on other models. Now we'll go to some of the new ones. So we're going to begin with a group of muscles called the gluteus muscles. There are three of them. Unfortunately, both of these models only show two of them. Everyone's favorite, gluteus maximus. Okay. The gluteus maximus is a hip extensor. So you have psoas and iliacus for flexion, gluteus maximus for hip extension. You take that off and you can now see there's a bunch of muscles underneath. This is the gluteus medius. It's the second of the group, gluteus medius. Underneath this, so if we were able to cut this away, underneath this is the third one called the gluteus minimus. So there's a minimus, a medius, and a maximus. Now we do have a model that shows all three. It's one of our torso models, the orange torso. We'll check that out later on, but there are three of them. The gluteus medius, the gluteus minimus, and a third muscle that we'll introduce. So the absence of the muscle is, is seen here. This piece right here is supposed to be right here, so we're missing this piece here. That's known as the tensor fascia lata. Okay, you can see a little bit of it here. So this muscle, tensor fascia lata, gluteus medius, and underneath it the minimus, all work together. Notice that it, the tensor fascia lata inserts into this big, large tendon running down the side of your leg, and the tendon is down here by the knee, as do these, okay, insert in, one, two, and the one underneath three, abduct the hip, so they move the leg away from the midline, abduction of the hip. So they abduct the hip, and they rotate the hip. So the tensor fascia lata, 
gluteus medius, and underneath the gluteus minimus, abduct the hip and rotate the hip. So it's a group of three. One, two, and underneath it, three. Then we have all these little ones here. Okay. We have them over here also. Okay. These are also rotators of the hip. So like we had in the shoulder, we had muscles that rotate the shoulder. We have muscles that rotate the hip. Okay. So we'll go in sequence. So here's the gluteus medius. The next one is the piriformis. And you can always find the piriformis because this large nerve, the largest nerve of the body, the sciatic nerve, always emerges from underneath the piriformis. So if you find the nerve, you know where the piriformis is. Piriformis. Then we have what's known as the superior gemellus. Then we have the obturator internus. Then we have the inferior gemellus. And then we have the quadratus femoris. And it's shaped like a rectangle. Tensa fascia lata, gluteus medius, piriformis. And then you have one, two, three little thin muscles, superior gemellus. Obturator internus, inferior gemellus, and quadratus femoris. Okay, those are rotators of the hip. They allow for rotation of the hip. Now, again, when we talked about the neck and the cervical spine, and we talked about the scalenes and how um, the scalenes had uh, large parts of the brachial plexus wedged between the muscle and it could compress. Well, same here, right? The piriformis, the sciatic nerve runs underneath it. It can be com compressed by the piriformis, causing irritation. In some people, the sciatic nerve actually is embedded and runs through the muscle, which can cause irritation of the, of the nerve. Now, let's just talk about this obturator internus for a moment, all right? What we're looking at here is the edge of the muscle because most of it is really seen here. So let's get our bearings. Here's the pubic symphysis, right? Here's the inferior ramus. Right here would be the big hole, the obturator foramen. And notice that the hole is covered by this big flat muscle. So we're inside the pelvis, inside. So this is known as the obturator internus because it's inside. So what you're seeing over here is you're seeing the very edge of this muscle. Now there's also an obturator externus, meaning outside the pelvis covering the hole. So we have our hole, we have one covering the inside and one covering the outside, an obturator externus. We don't see it on our model. It's another one of the, the rotators. So that's a little bit about the obturator. So you see the edge of it here, but you see most of it here, obturator internus.